We're in CS6. We're going to use the new pattern tool and we're going to make a toss design with single repeats and in repeat swatch with three colorways. So we'll go to File New and we'll call this uh, Pat Tool. And you can put your last name. And letter size, inches, advanced button, make sure RGB is on. OK. All right, so I've got the default color palette here. I will pull up uh, my own colors that I want to use in other library. I have to go to my files and here they are, some colors. A custom palette always comes up as a separate palette. Okay, so we're going to go up here in the upper left. We have our rectangle tool and we click and we can make it a quarter inch wide tab by an inch high. Okay, and we can fill it with any one of these colors and go in close. Hit the control R to get your rulers on. Take your black arrow and pull out a vertical line and center it. And use your pen tool to create a at a point right in the center here on the top and then your white arrow to pull it up just like that and we've got our first little kind of a crayon we'll work with crayons you can click on your guideline and you could get rid of it here on the palette too on the layer palette just throw your guideline away like that and you can grab this and do control C and then right away we will lock this layer and take off the eye for the visibility and we'll make a new layer and do control V. Okay, so we will work on this new layer. And then we go to object, pattern, and make and OK. Okay, we get a straight one. We hit in the upper left corner the pattern tile tool and you can pull to each side and you can pull on the top like this and then you can take make sure you have your black arrow grab the one and I think I would take the one and I would put a kind of a curve on it okay make sure you do not have the size tile to art uh, clicked or the move tile with art click they should be empty and kind of move this Okay, and then do right click, transform, and you can <clears throat> reflect, preview. I'm reflecting it horizontal, make a copy, and you can use your arrow key to kind of move that copy up and left or right. Now you can add a little more space in this group if you hit this uh, upper upper left button. You can add some more space. You don't want to have too much because if you have too much space you're going to be making those forever. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this, maybe four or five crayons. So we're going to transform and we're going to rotate, uh, we can rotate 90 and copy and move it. And move it just so it kind of fits in there. Looks like maybe we could use maybe one more of these. So we'll go transform, um, rotate and this time maybe a minus minus 120 just to see what it looks like you can hit the preview and you see what it looks like and make a copy and move it down and move it over and you can turn it a little more if you need you gotta always when you're making a toss design like this 
the the most important thing is to watch your spacing okay and your direction so you move it around and when it looks kind of evenly spaced and like everything is going in different directions and you're not getting an obvious horizontal or a vertical or a diagonal line then you know you've done it right so at that point you can save it as a copy and you can call it your tossed and say OK. OK, now you could color it when you're in here, just so you know. You could select these different items, and maybe we'll color our first one here. So there's one, and there's another, and maybe one more, and there's another. So the first grouping we have colored over here. So I'll save this and call this um, colorway one, tossed color one. Might as well recolor it right here. Okay, now I'll do the third colorway from the layer palette so you see it. Okay, so now I'll do another colorway. Okay. Okay, so this will be um colorway 2 tossed colorway 2 and I'll say okay. The third colorway I'm going to do from the layer palette just to show you. So I'll say done. Okay, now I'll put this up in the corner. This was my original. And I will find my swatches. Here they are. Here's colorway two. All right, so I'm going to look at it over here. Okay, I go to the background. I want to put a background on it. Control C, Control F. Control C, Control F. I put one of the no fill, no stroke rectangles in the front. Then I go second from the back and I put some sort of a color in it there. And then I grab everything and I crop it. Okay, then I make it a size that is manageable for me. And for this one, I will make it, because I want to get three on this page. So I have my constraints on, and I will make the biggest measurement one. Okay, so here it is, one. And then when you have that done, you can put it in your palette. Okay, so that was my colorway two. So now here's my tossed colorway one and I look at it over here. I grab my background again. Control C, Control F, Control C, Control F. Control F means paste in front. Move one to the front, go second from the back, and put in a dark. Okay, I have a dark. Grab everything and crop it. Okay, and make the biggest size one inch. And then put it in here. Okay, and then put it here. That's my second colorway. And now grab my first and look at it on the palette. We'll color this one from the palette. And just grab the different you see, you can just grab the different ones. But when you do it this way, you almost have to take this little uh, these squares and temporarily, you have to temporarily put a stroke on them because this crayon is going across the edge. So that means this crayon over here on the top, and you have to find it. Okay, not those. 
this is a group. See, it, maybe it's a little more to it over here. Okay, this crayon right here has to be the same blue color because it's going over the edge. Okay, the same over here, these two crayons here. So now I'll take this one. This can be any color because it's all by itself and it's not crossing an edge. Okay, and so now we'll take another one. Now this is crossing an edge. I'll have to color this one too, the same color. So I'm going to find a color here. So now I have to find the other one. Here it is. So this takes a little longer. Now these four I can leave them all that color if I want it to be that color, or I can grab those colors, hold my shift down, and grab them wherever I see them on the palette here and put a color in there. There. Now some of these I had an outline on. I think I forgot to I'll just make sure there and black outline on each one. There. So here's the rectangle in the back. Control C, Control F, Control C, Control F. Put one in the front for the cropping. Grab the second one from the back and put in a color. Okay, there's a color. I'm wondering what else we could put in there. Let's put something else in there. Okay, that's kind of a, maybe I'll put a gray in there. Oh, that dark one's nice. So I'll put that in there. Then I grab everything and then I crop and then I have to resize to one inch the largest. Okay, so this will be my third colorway. Put it in here. Okay, I could put maybe the light one in between. Okay, so now I make a little swatch. Maybe I'll make it um, five wide by three high. Okay, so that'll be a swatch here. And make another one right here. And another one right here. So we have three swatches. You can line these up with your um, guidelines or your smart guides. Uh, the only thing uh, that would be added to what's here that I have not done would be you would put your Pantone color chips and codes underneath. Okay, so this would be this one. This would be this one. This would be this one. Okay, and making your color chips for this one, you would have one, two, three, four, five color chips and I'll show you on one it would take too long to do all of them but another thing you can do when you're presenting these in your three color ways you grab this and you put that little pinked edge on it distort and transform preview just like this. It gives it a nice look. Sometimes another thing that you can do to give this a nice look is to put a little bit of um, a drop shadow on your swatches. Sometimes that looks good too, but not on your single repeats. Now I'll do the little colorways for one single repeat. 
so that you see what it looks like. Uh, I think I have to make them pretty small. I'll try 0.25 by 0.25 there. Okay, and you can make yourself a guideline. And you can just put your colors in. Or you can even right click and say transform, move, horizontal, 0.25, tab 0 and make a copy and then just do control D for a repeat and then in each one you would select each one and put your colors in. So there's a color there, there's a color, there's the pink, there's a color here, and there's a color here. Okay, so that would be your colorway grouping. You would group these, control G, and you would list these. And you would also list your Pantone codes when you're presenting this. So you could put a name for this particular design. This is your motif, your original motif you started with. And these are your, uh, your toss design in repeat in three colorways. Uh, in order to prepare this assignment for layout, I gave you an example of how it should look. The colors underneath should actually have Pantone codes. I just wrote the word Pantone there, but you should have the code numbers there on a 90 degree angle for each color. I'm going to move the motif down here and we can put a, a title on and I'll show you how you can do that when you have an odd shape like this. You could just kind of make a curve, a nice looking curve, no stroke, no fill. You can smooth it out and adjust it. And then you could take your text tool and click right on it. And make this a little smaller. here and you could make them all in different colors if you want. You can adjust it some more. If I wanted to adjust the curve some more I could select this white arrow and I could select the curve some more. See there's all kinds of all kinds of things that you can do. Okay I could take it I could even turn the whole thing rotate the whole thing a little bit and then to save it I would go File, Save As, Pat Tool in your last name, AI Illustrator, Save, and Illustrator 6, PDF Compatible File. Uh, only save in lower illustrators if you work on a lower illustrator. If you do work on a lower illustrator, do not save as a 6. Save in the lowest illustrator version you have. You can always go higher from a lower, but you can't go um, lower from a higher. So I go OK, and that's it.